actually say, as we look to 2023, that the worst of the supply chain issues are over, the congestion is behind us, uh, and now it's more or less a return to normal? Absolutely. Well, first of all, happy holidays and thanks for having me back. I think normal is a relative term, as we've all learned the past yeah. couple of years. Supply chain challenges have eased up in every spot from the ports opening back up in China, port congestion easing up in the States. So I do think the biggest challenge is behind us. What the challenge is now is how retailers utilize all the merchandise they purchased that was more expensive during the challenges merge it with stuff they can get now to sort of normalize prices and really give us a break from inflation right now, especially as consumers. So let's dig into that a little bit. What are retailers sure. doing? How are you advising them? What does that mean for your business? Yeah, you know, so first of all, we're coming off a holiday season where we were about flat as last year. The average consumer spent $870, which is down a couple dollars up over the last five years. So that didn't move the needle too much. What we saw, consumerism for Q4 started in September, October. So if you want to look at the holiday season this year, you almost have to look at it as a four-month quarter versus three months. What we're seeing as well in the last 48 hours is consumers, and we predicted this, are going to start returning more stuff because perhaps they thought they wanted it, but they opened it. You've got retailers bringing prices down 70 to 80 percent. So return what you got for the holidays, get what you really want. And then we start to ease into January, which traditionally there's a January sales slump. And we feel that retailers have a massive opportunity here to take the high inventory levels, bring prices down, and in turn start the year, get out of the January sales slump, and really see bigger numbers in January than we have in the past. It's a great opportunity for both the retailer and the consumer right now. It's, it's really the, the perfect storm. So, Brett, it's Dom here. I guess you're a wholesale distributor, which means this is business level volumes you're dealing with. Eventually, those flow through to the consumer or retail level. I wonder if I mean, I know that you're not an economist, but but I'd like to get your business expertise and sense on just how inflation will be a big part of the story in 2023 or will it? Do you see the things slowing down in terms of price increases, given what you're seeing in shipping and everything else? Absolutely. You know, inflation played in. Inflation was almost the straw that broke the supply chains back. When fuel prices went up, container prices went up, intermodal transportation prices went up, it all translated to higher prices to the consumer. But when you've got shipping costs down 40 percent, just on the freight side, to put it in perspective, we saw container prices drop the last three months from 40000 to 6000 That's a significant price reduction. So what that does is it drives the price down. The challenge retailers have, and we saw the street get nervous with Walmart and Target a few months ago, is retailers are sitting on heavy inventory levels that they paid a lot of money for. So they have two options. They move it to the off-price channel, the Marshalls, the Ross, the five belows of the world, or they blend it with more regular price goods that they're now getting in. So if they were buying something at 10 and now they're bringing it in at five, lower the cost on your balance sheet seven and a half normalize the price to the consumer and, and, you know, the street's happy because your inventory levels are coming down and Wall Street raises your share price. Is Nike a leading indicator for what we're seeing play out across retail right now? Yeah, you know, we're seeing retail change significantly. What we're seeing, a bigger shift to off-price, right? Before, off-price was a very limited segment. Now, when you look at Macy's and Nordstrom's and Neiman's, traditionally five years ago, these were in a, they were looked at differently than a Marshall's, Ross, a Home Goods, a Five Below. Now it's all one. And those retailers, by the way, have to continue to shift if they want to take advantage of the consumer because an off price retail consumer also looks different. It's, it's sort of you know, economic agnostic. It doesn't matter what your household income is. If you can save money by shopping at one of these stores, that's where you're going to shift your purchases to, undeniably. Brett Rose. Thanks for joining us today and happy holidays. And to you.